We'll be we'll throwing some things here in just a couple minutes, but I uh, wanted to start out maybe by uh, showing you guys uh, all the stuff that I have made and ready so far for this firing. And so, uh, uh, yeah, we'll be starting to load my wood kiln this Wednesday. So I don't even know what date that is, but uh, uh, here the like third week of March. And uh, yeah, I've, I've made uh, quite a lot of things and a lot of it in the last, uh, well, most of it in the last four to six weeks uh, because of my schedule. So, hey, Margaret, hope you're doing well. So welcome everybody. And uh, let's see, I'll just kind of give you a little tour the studio here and what all it's it's been quite uh, I've had several customers the last couple of days uh, and I, every one of them I've had to apologize because it is quite the mess in here but or well, not mess but I've got uh, I normally have this table sitting here that I have work on uh, but this one is in the middle of the gallery and uh, as you can see I've got I uh, uh, got my lights there I got my dehumidifier that's been running to get things dried out uh, I've, uh, it's not super cold here, but I got my heater on cause it's been a little chilly, but uh, I've got all this stuff here. Most of it I need to decorate. You can see so that some of those planters there, uh, have already decorated. Uh, and, and then these hanging planters here, these are the three pound hanging planters. Uh, so I have made those and then, uh, trimmed those, put the holes in them, starting to decorate those. Uh, I think I've made uh somewhere 130 140 mugs so far for this firing uh you can see back here we've got most of the things made already glazed which is a good uh head start uh, but you can see there all the pieces on the rack that are pretty much ready to go uh i have uh platter bowls that i still have to glaze so there's a whole board of platter bowls up there as well as one down over here those haven't been glazed yet but a lot of other things have been glazed or are most glazed i have to like some of these i'll have to spray an ash glaze on uh to finish those off got a bunch of bird houses for this firing i've got some cool slip decoration on some of those so some jugs um just some vases apple pie for two dishes there a bunch of coffee mugs uh the uh, face jugs and cabin scene cabin jugs got some stuff here some more bases got my wadding all mixed up and ready that's all bagged up ready to go got some uh, squared bottles here for side firing and another cabin jug there some twist a twisted mug i got the one rebecca picture that i uh, made in a previous live stream that's here, that's been glazed, ready to go, ready to roll. And uh, yeah, some stuff here on the table, some soup mugs, a uh, couple beehive uh, vases. I have my electric kiln here, which is actually full. Need to unload that, it's still a little over 100 degrees, but I have our giant cabin jug that I made there. A couple large platter bowls. So anyway, just to give you guys an idea of what's going on here, there's been been a lot happening so anyway uh let's see i guess i need to get my tripod and we'll get set up and start throwing some stuff here Anyway, hope you guys are doing well. All right, now I can see my chat now as well. So, hey Mario, hey uh, Pat, uh, Betty, welcome, welcome. So, uh, let's see. So I'm gonna make a few. Um, uh, this is another size smaller of the. Uh, Actually, I need to turn, I think I need to turn this camera around, use my, uh, use the other camera angle. That way I can actually see what I'm showing you on this camera as well as on my chat there. I'm actually going to be uh, making some more of these. Uh, this is the smaller size of the hanging planter that I make. 
So I'm going to be making a few of these. This one has a hole in the bottom. I make some with and some without the hole in the bottom so that um, you, they can either drain or not drain. Obviously, if you're going to have it in your house, you might not want a hole in the bottom. So let me move my this a little bit closer. There we go. How's that? Now you guys can see a little bit better there. Lean in a little bit, maybe. So anyway, um, yeah, Pat, it's raining here in North Carolina. It's been raining all day, so that's one of the reasons I got the dehumidifier running to get things dried out, as well as just to keep it warm in here so I can keep working. So, uh, yeah, no, man, hey, welcome. Yeah, I do have a bunch of stuff ready to go. Uh, Hey Burke, uh, good good job. I'm glad to hear uh, that you're uh, gonna give the hanging planters a try and congrats on the throwing larger. Uh, Fire Frost, hello from Tennessee, welcome. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Benjamin, welcome. Sean, welcome, welcome. And Ulrika, welcome. Wow, I got people from all over the place here, so it's pretty cool. So, welcome everybody. Uh, anyway, so I have a pound and a half for these smaller uh, hanging planters here. And so uh, these are a bit tricky for people to learn how to make because you have to uh, pull up that clay and then cone it all the way together and close that off. Um, so you definitely have to learn to keep some extra clay uh, up at the top when you're, when you're pulling uh, so that you can uh, cone that all the way in after making the belly at the, at the base. So they get they get a bit tricky in that sense. So you definitely have to learn. I'm gonna pull this even closer so you guys can see really well what's going on here. Hey Patty, welcome back. Hobble Creek. Welcome. You've always caught it later. Well, welcome. Yeah. Sarah, welcome, welcome. So anyway, so on these uh, hang, uh, hanging planters, they're all, and no matter what the size, they're all kind of made the same. I center the clay ball. I kind of flatten it out a bit to about the width that I want the, uh, the bottom to be, which is eventually going to be the top because these are made upside down. So... That's about the width that I want these to be uh, to give you a size. That's a pound and a half clay and that's about six inches wide now. Then I'm gonna take, uh, I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna push all the way down to the bat. And I'm gonna start to lift up underneath that clay. And once I get it wide enough that I can get an extra finger in there, it kind of helps to have a couple fingers inside. And I support it with my left hand here. You can kind of see just to keep my hands steady and then I'm going to push up underneath there and then I'm going to reach in with my left hand now and kind of lift that up and open that up a little bit you don't want to open it up really wide because you got to close all that all the way back in so and then I'm going to pull this straight up or not straight up I'm going to pull it towards the center but I'm going to pull up get some of that clay out but I don't want to I want to pull but I, uh, at the top, but I don't want to aggressively pull too much of that clay out of the top because I want to, like I said, I want to leave that thickness there so I can pinch that in. And then I'll do one more pull where I'm going to kind of shape a pull a little bit more and then shape a little bit on, on the what's going to be the, the main belly of the planter. So now that I got that main shape and then I want to... Uh, use my rib to I like to form a little uh, a little ring around the bottom which will eventually like I said be the top but this little ring that you see here I like to form that so that it kind of gives like a, a little I don't know to me it kind of reminds me of what would be crown molding so if I hold it up this way you can kind of see where it's going to be hanging you'll see that little bit of kind of round piece a little decorative piece kind of looks Reminds me of what like crown molding would be in a house. So 
So I'll also uh, give you the other angle of what I'm doing here in a minute after I make a couple. And before I close all this in, I'm going to clean the water out of the bottom there. Hey, Mary. Welcome. Oh, I'm glad you love your mug. Thank you so much. Tegan, Tegan, welcome. So, sorry, I was looking at my chat while I was doing that, but I, I just, like I said, you gotta, you gotta pinch in and then pull up a little bit, and then uh, even if you are gonna leave a hole in the bottom, I like to go ahead and close it all the way off, because if you close it all the way off, it traps the air inside, which gives you something to push against if you wanna do some shaping uh, on this, uh, on, on the belly of it, because it would, what you're doing now is if I'm shaping now, I'm pushing against the air inside, so it kind of gives me some something to push against so that I can kind of form this a little bit without it collapsing because that air is supporting it on the inside. So on these, if I do want to make them have a hole in it, I will pretty much make the whole thing like that, and then I'll come back before I remove it from the wheel and just grab my needle tool and then cut the hole back in the bottom or back in this little, the top of it here. Um, and now it will have a hole in it. But that way I don't have to worry about collapsing the rest of it by leaving that hole in when I'm shaping the base of it. <laughs> uh, Bertine, yeah, go back to the mug with the face on it. Yeah, I, uh, I, I ran out of time. Uh, I'm running out of time this firing and I, I ha have some people that want face mugs and I made some um, pieces in intentionally to put faces on and uh, I started putting the face on the first one and I, I was not enjoying it. It was, uh, it was kind of like tedious and just uh, I wasn't, like I said, wasn't enjoying it. I was thinking the whole time, this is not fun. I got other things I need to do. So that is the only face mug I made. And so I will have to try some at a later time, either for my gas kiln or the wood kiln, because I just don't have enough time to make face mugs for this firing. So, so that's that. Uh, do you add the string or chain to them before you sell them? Yes, Margaret, I do. Yeah, I, I uh, on these, I use a uh, stainless steel leader wire that's used for, like, fishing. So it's like a black stain, it's a black coated stainless steel leader wire. And the crimps that come with it, that you can buy with those. And then I use, like, a stainless steel hoop. I think I show all of that detail in my couple, I made... I think two videos on hanging planters. I think I show all of the things that I use to make those and hang those. Uh, you mentioned in your videos you briefly lived in Ontario near Toronto. Yeah, whereabouts did you live? Uh, I uh, lived in Mississauga. So I think that's northwest of Toronto, if I remember correctly. It's been a long time, but... Yeah, I really enjoyed it there, and I was, uh, so... 
All right, Pat. Uh, thanks for being here. You can uh, check out the lot the replay later. Like I said, this area here is the really critical part that you don't want to pull too much of the weight out of that part so that you can taper it in without uh, without it buckling. Even, uh, but, e but even me, I have to, like the first couple I made, uh, not right now, but I made some earlier, the first couple I made, I had to like, oh, wait a minute, I gotta leave a little more clay because it wanted to buckle and I'm like, you know, I didn't lose any, but I had to remind myself um, to do that, so. Uh, what bat system do I use? Uh, this is not really a bat system as much as it is just bat pins in the uh, uh, in the wheel head, and then I have these uh, uh, tempered uh, masonite or hardboard bats that are uh, have the holes drilled in them for um, for bats. So you can see there, I didn't I didn't pull a lot in that top area there. And I'm also just going to add water back to that top area that I want to pinch in there. Uh, and I like to, to pinch in and then and then do a pull. And that kind of helps because it's got a little bit of a ripple in it that I can feel. But by pulling it, I kind of help pull that out. And then I can go back and pinch in again. And like I said, once you get far enough in if you uh, got it kind of the shape you want like you don't want to trap too much air so that you can't shape it but once you get about the shape you want if you can close that all the way off then you trap that air inside there and it helps you to finish shaping it probably could have made that one a little bigger I got a lot of clay down here at the base but I'm gonna pinch a little bit more of that off and then I just do all just kind of random different designs to uh, what's eventually gonna be the base of it here or the bottom of it currently making some boot mugs uh, hey Abbott welcome yes you finally made it to a live stream welcome well, I've been doing a lot more of them the last couple weeks because uh, or last three or four weeks because I knew I didn't have time to make and edit regular videos so I decided that I would do some live streams leading up to this wood firing so And if you have you guys have any questions that's not about uh, hanging planters, that's fine too. Um, like I said, I've got my iPad over here so I can see the chat pretty easily while I'm doing this. And I'll I'll uh, I got to move a board down to put more of these on, and then um, I can also uh, move the camera to the other side so you can see the other angle of making those. Yes, this is to answer your question. This is my uh, full time, full time income is making pottery. Not not YouTube, but making and selling pottery. Yes, it is my uh, it is my full time income. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for being here. So 
you can see the, the bats I'm talking about, whoever asked that question earlier, that, that was uh, Nikki. Uh, these are just, uh, like I said, tempered masonite. They're quarter inch thick masonite bats. Uh, they're smooth on both sides and they're tempered. Um, and still, even over time, you can kind of see they start to get a little rough. There's a little ripped spot there as well as on this side. So they don't last forever, but um, I really like them. Uh, they work out well. It just can be hard to find the material, so. Thank you, Fire Frost. Like I said, I'm using a pound and a half for these, uh, and uh, so that's the amount of clay for these. And uh, like I said, I, I get the clay centered. I flatten it out into kind of like a really thick pancake and, and leave it a little bit thicker than in the middle than the sides, because that's where the bulk of the clay needs to be for pulling up to make the shape. But I'll make like a pancake kind of like that but it's like I said it's probably twice as high in the middle as it is the sides push down in the center all the way to the bat and start to move out from under that don't forget to add some water inside there and then start using like two fingers once I get it wide enough that I can fit that underneath there and then add some more water and start to pull it from there so I want to lift up and, and I still want to pull towards the center of the bat so that I don't make this too wide because I got to close this all the way off anyway my next pull will be a little bit up at the base here and then back in once I get I'm kind of shaping and pulling at the same time on this second pull here Then I like to, like I said, make that little, uh, make that little foot or uh, bevel at the base there, which, like I said, will eventually be the rim of it. But make that little bevel, and then start to shape from above that little bevel there. Uh, let's see. Do you have back exercises? Uh, go to massage fistless? No, thankfully I don't. Uh, maybe it's my age or maybe I'm just blessed with good health, but uh, I don't really have any back or back issues. So, very thankful for that. I don't just sit and throw all the time. I have a stand-up wheel that I work at and then also spend a lot of time doing other things, splitting and stacking wood, you know, loading kilns, unloading kilns, all kind, of, you know, all the things that come along with making and firing pottery. So, And of course, if you want to leave ones uh, without a hole in the bottom, when you're done doing that, you can just leave it like that. You don't have to worry about putting a hole back in the bottom. But like I said, if you are going to put a hole in the bottom, I still think it's a good idea to close it all the way off and then put that hole in at the very end like I did with a needle tool. And then uh, definitely like these, you have to come back to after a few hours and cut them off the bat. And once they're stiff enough, I put them in a uh, form, uh, like these smaller ones, I just put, I have this bisfired form that I can trim things in, 
And so I'll just put this back on the wheel. Actually, I'll just set this on my sticky bat and then I can uh, turn the uh, hanging planter upside down inside of this and I kind of get it level and then I can, uh, you know, hold it down while I trim that top rim of it. So that's what I set that. The larger ones I make, I have to set those down in something larger like a, like a utensil holder or something like that for them to sit in while I trim them. So, uh, let's see. Oh, shred packs no longer exist. I need to change it. <laughs> well, uh, well, welcome anyway from Houston. Uh, I just had a visitor recently from Austin. They were here for the Potter's Conference and uh, came by to see my studio. So, uh, Let's see. Uh, sounds like back exercise to me. Yeah, all that extra work. Yeah. Are you coming to Enseca, Pat? No, I am not. Uh, every year... I, uh, for the last six, seven years, I've been doing a show on that exact same weekend, uh, in Hickory, North Carolina. And so that's in, uh, what is that in two weeks? I think, uh, I'll be at that show, which is always the same weekend as in Sika. So maybe eventually I will, but I would like to go, but, um, this time of year, if I can go to a show and make some money, it's a better idea than spending it on going to Enseca. So... Uh, I caught your channel because the other guy came to help you. Uh, you talking about John the Potter? That's usually how people find me. <laughs> they find him first, and then they're like, oh, hey, look at this guy. What's he do? Uh, Hobble Creek. I have, do, I have considered doing a wood, uh, a, a wood firing workshop. Um... I just don't, yeah, I, I got to figure out how that would work. The, the biggest trouble with that is that uh, to do a wood firing workshop, I would love to include the, the glazing and then, uh, you know, maybe even some slip work. I, I just, it'd be hard to fit all that in, obviously. But even if it was just loading and firing the wood kiln, that would be a, a four day process for loading and firing. And then if you if somebody wanted to still be here when we unloaded, that's on a Tuesday after we fire. So it'd be basically be a Wednesday through Tuesday event. So it would be a long it'd be a long event for somebody to pay all that money to come and do that. Um, they would definitely have to have, like I said, plenty of expendable income and time to spend five days. Uh, and that's not counting travel. That's just being here Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday to Tuesday, so. Yeah, Bertine, I, I do plan on making some more face mugs eventually. It's been a while since I've made any, but uh, they, uh, the face jugs I like a whole lot better because they're uh, there's just so much more space uh, to work with. Um, it's probably a price point issue as well. When I make face mugs, it's, I don't know, trying to figure out a price point that works, that's worthwhile. Because it's like, you know, I can probably sell, you know, I, I can make another five mugs at least in the time it takes me to put one face on a mug. So it's like, uh, I know everything's not based on production, but just trying to think about what my time's worth is, that's the tricky part. Yeah, I've thought about doing a wood fire workshop. Like I said, it would just be a long... I probably need to just put it out there and see what kind of response I get. Uh, kind of get some feedback on it. I'd have to figure out how much it costs. Then I'd also, like I'd want... If people came, obviously it'd be better if people could come and then bring pieces to fire. That's kind of how most of the idea is. You'd like to not only come, but bring pieces. Or if you live far away, you'd have to ship pieces ahead of time. Uh, and then have them here so that they could be loaded and fired. Um, but then, like I said, also it's the fact that I have to give up whatever percentage of that specific firing it is to, to make that workshop work. Uh, and 
Yeah, because I, I, I really, I definitely can't fit in an extra firing in a year. Like to fit in a fourth firing in a year's time just would be too, be too much. I can just, I already know that. How and why wood kiln volume and aesthetics do you use uh, regular kilns? Um, yeah, I mean, I have an electric kiln, a gas kiln, a wood fired kiln. Uh, the wood kiln is definitely uh, the aesthetic you get, the uh, experience of wood firing, the uh, uh, there's just a lot of different factors of what makes things look different and, and uh, uh, for a wood firing. Um, just the experience of actually firing with wood is, is pretty amazing compared to all of the ways of, of finishing pottery, at least in my experience. So in my opinion, so, uh, a tax deductible. Yeah. Uh, that would be between you and your, your accountant, whether that's tax deductible, I guess it would be if you came and <laughs> if it was a business expense for you to come learn. Right. Um, uh, parcel, uh, spring, uh, mold for the face mug. Uh, no, I don't think I would do molds for, for really anything, but yeah. yeah, I mean, it's possible, but I don't, I don't know that that would speed it up much. Uh, no man. Um, uh, <laughs> speaking from an accountant slash potter, I would do it after April 15th. Yes, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would probably do it for my spring or my 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 summer firing, uh, which is usually in July. The only downside of that is it's I mean it's nice weather here, but firing is very hot in then. But uh, you'd have a better chance for the rest of the weather to be nice for everything else we do, um, as well as that's just kind of my least busy time of the year. Um, Usually, uh, my spring firing is kind of, it's usually, it's been kind of a time crunch mainly because coming out of the holidays and then trying to, uh, trying to get ready for the Hickory show that I do. And then also, um, uh, my kiln opening that's in April, our event that we have here in Seagrove is always like around the third weekend in April. So I'm kind of gearing up doing some things for that as well. Thanks, uh, Shred Packs. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the video that John made of the Woodfire Experience is probably one of my favorite videos he's ever made. Of course, I'm biased, but also just the editing and the, the experience. The teaser is probably, like, just as, well, not just as good, but, I mean, it's a pretty amazing teaser that he put out. That couple-minute teaser of, uh, of the Woodfire event was pretty cool. Philippe from Brazil, welcome. Casey, welcome. Oh yeah, I, uh, I can get a finished piece of what I'm making now. I don't have one this size, but I can get a finished hanging planter and you can kind of see what it looks like. I have, uh, I have some of the neck size up finished. William, okay, yeah, thank you, yeah. <laughs> Not that I'll remember that, William, but uh, thank you. Hey, Shelly, welcome. Crafty Span, welcome from the UK. Yeah, we were. I was talking about the UK the other day because uh, my son... Uh, we were talking about something and he said, well, he said, are they behind us or ahead of us? And I'm like, no, they're, they're five hours ahead of us. Uh, at least I know England is. Um, uh, and so 
Yeah, I know it's much, much later there. I guess England, UK, same thing, right? <laughs> um, Hey Matt, need more bats? Hey Bob, uh, yeah, well, uh, I think uh, I'm pretty good at the moment, but I, I'm probably gonna opt for more square ones if all you got left is that one, that one sheet of, of material left, because I definitely use the square ones more than I use the round ones, and I have noticed I got a few square ones that are starting to show some wear and tear. Uh, it'll be a sad day once I have to actually get some more if you can't find more material. You're gonna make some people upset though, Bob, coming here asking me if I want more bats. <laughs> They're gonna be like, what about me? I need bats. Hey Mia from Sweden. Welcome, very welcome. Um, yeah, Abbott, um, for anybody really interested in helping out with the wood firing, unless I eventually do a wood fire workshop, um, I pretty much would have to be looking for some extra help on a particular firing. And if that's the case, the uh, best thing to do is just send me an email so that I have your contact information. Uh, and then as it gets close to a firing, if I see I have space and I need some extra help, I usually go through my email and look for the people that have sent me an email saying, hey, I'm open to firing, you know, and then just check with them and see if they're available for that particular firing. I have a lot of the same people that help me over and over again, which is kind of why Wood Fire Workshop would make sense um, to kind of open it up to more people. But I would still have to have a couple of them probably help with that firing because uh, there's certain parts of the firing that I can't be a part of because I need some sleep and I but I also need some experience to be a part of those parts of the firing. So, um, yeah. Uh, Philippe, I'm making some hanging planters. Hi, Danielle. Everybody say hi to Danielle, my wife. The person that makes all this possible because somebody's got to take care of the kids while I'm out here playing in the mud. Uh, I'm going to go grab a, a finished hanging planter so you can see one of those. justice my son's watching <laughs> all right here's a finished hanging planter here's the uh that's the the coated uh stainless steel leader wire on there there's the uh stainless steel uh, hoop that i and you can see the crimps there that i attach the leader wire with and so then it hangs like this and i can't show you the whole thing because you know that, but basically hangs you can kind of see it like that from the ceiling you know that one was fired in my gas kiln so Yeah, backcountry, yeah, I, I, I definitely would love to have somebody to come and help and also take some photos of wood firing. Um, I've had a, a couple people do that in the past, but it's been a while for sure. So, uh, uh, how long before you became or knew you were producing quality products to sell for profit? One putter just told me it took her about one year before she felt comfortable. Well, I had kind of a 
opposite turn, uh, opposite way of coming about that because I worked for other potters as a journeyman for a very long time. So I was producing, in my opinion, quality work for years before I ever started selling my own work. Uh, but that was mainly just because I, uh, like I said, was, was getting paid and working for other potters. Um, and so I hadn't started selling my own work even though I was already a professional potter per se. So. Thank you, Shelly. Yeah, she's, uh, she is a great uh, partner for sure. So, uh, I usually make bonsai pots. Okay, Philippe. Yeah, I, uh, I had somebody come to me, ask me about making a bunch of bonsai pots because they were selling some bonsais, but I haven't, I haven't made those. I didn't, um, speak to them again after that, so. Hi, Lucinda. Welcome. It's your first time here. Uh, these are a pound and a half. Uh, the larger one that I just showed you a second ago, if you were here, I showed a finished one. That was a three pound hanging planter. Um, obviously you can make them whatever size and weight that you want to, but that's just the couple sizes I'm making here. Um, these probably end up being about, um, well, wet. They're about six inches wide and maybe about four inches, four to five inches tall. And then finished, just take off whatever, 12 to... 14% of that in shrinkage, so. Uh, crafty, yeah, I, uh, last firing, I didn't do any live streaming of the, of the firing. Um, I, I will, I will this time. I just, uh, I kind of needed a break, and it was kind of nice just to fire without having to worry about setting up a camera for a live stream, so. But I'll try to do that. I think I, I live streamed the unloading, but I didn't do the firing. So, but I'll try to do that this time. I'll just make a couple more of these and then we'll go on to uh, maybe some more uh, jugs and vases, some small jugs and vases that I'd like to make for this firing. Uh, yeah, Lucinda, yeah, I've, I've seen some pretty, uh, it's crazy, there's certain niche or niche markets like bonsais, bonsai planters that some people just sell for outrageous amounts, yeah, it's kind of quite, kind of crazy, kind of like you know me, so those are another thing that's a, a pretty simple item, but some people just sell them for crazy amounts. 
Uh, no, Philippe, I don't do much trimming on, the, on my pots. The, uh, these get a little bit of trimming, obviously, because I have to cut them free from the bat, flip them over, and, and trim down a little bit of that thickness as well as just get rid of the uh, roughness of, of, of where, kind of that sharp edge. Uh, on regular pieces, I don't trim a foot in hardly anything. Uh, my, uh, I made some twisted bowls and twisted mugs. I, I trim a foot in those. Uh, if I do make any, you know me, uh, I do trim a foot in those. But, uh, you know. <laughs> Sarah, thank you. Yeah, uh, I think uh, for years I... I, I just learned over time just how to stay clean while throwing. It wasn't like my goal, but I guess just throwing enough, I, I just learned to do it. So uh, I don't really do, Casey, I don't do much hand-built or slab uh, pieces, but you can, obviously you can, and you can put them in a wood kiln. I've done some slab uh, plates in the wood kiln. Um, so I just, I, I, I like slab work, but I just don't get, I don't take much time to do it because it takes me so long to make anything that I, I feel like, man, I'm really, I could have spent my time way better doing something else just cause I'm not proficient at it cause I don't do it very often. Hey, Marmon, from Belgium, welcome. Uh, how do I balance these while trimming? I, uh, I can show you, I have a, uh, I have a piece over here that I have that's bisfired, that's, uh, that I set the pieces down in to hold them, uh, to kind of, so that I can set them upside down, uh, and then I'll put, uh, I'll use my trimming spinner. I'll put it down inside to kind of, so my left hand can have some down pressure while I'm trimming. So I can show you that in a second. I wish I had one ready to trim. I'd show you that, but I, you can see it in my video. I have, I think a two part video on my hanging planters. And I think one part I show the trimming, uh, one part I show the throwing and then the next one I show the trimming. Yeah, I basically have a chuck. Yeah, Pat. Um, it's just a it's just a bisfire chuck though. So I use this and I'll put it down. I put my sticky bat down from Diamond Core Tools and then I set this down on top. I'll set the uh, planter down in here this way, and then I kind of level it and then I kind of adjust this so that it's it's in the center of the wheel after I level it. And then I and then I'll use my larger trimming spinner like this. I put it down inside so then I can kind of have down pressure on it to hold it securely in the chuck and then trim the top with my trim my t trimming tool hopefully that makes sense hey ambia from washington welcome uh uh yeah uh crafty this definitely this is a stonework clay that definitely has some grog in it most, actually, what I'm using now is, is like a, a reclaim. I processed a whole bunch of reclaim. And so this uh, uh, is a reclaim. There's probably three or four different clays. Uh, and then I did add a little bit extra grog to it just to make sure it had enough to handle the wood firing. So, all right, I've got a uh, two pound clay ball here. I'm actually going to lower this camera height and then raise up the camera like this give you a little different angle i got a, a few two pound clay balls here that we'll make some uh, vases or jugs out of
Uh, Philippe, yeah, I do make my own glazes. I, I have a couple that are commercial glazes that I use, um, but mostly I make my own glazes, yep. Do I formulate my own glazes? Most of the glazes I have, I do mix myself, but I did not come up with the recipes. Uh, I've altered a couple of them, but uh, for the most part did not, or not the most part, I did not come up with the base recipes for, uh, I don't know that I know enough about glaze chemistry to start one from scratch, but, uh, um, and there are, more than enough recipes out there that you don't necessarily have to come up with your own even if you do want to mix your own glazes um, unless you just want to you know there's there's plenty of glazes out there that you could experiment with that you don't have to formulate your own yeah there's glazy for sure I mean there's there's resources that you can do it for sure yeah, Philippe, that blue, that's a that's a Rutile blue that I found in John Britt's book uh, on high fire glazes. And uh, I tested several Rutile blue glazes and found that that was my favorite one. And it looks different in my gas kiln and my wood kiln, so I get different looks out of the same glaze. So. Sound like I hit an air bubble a second ago. Yeah, I got I got a couple in there. I don't know. Uh, do I ever use porcelain crafty? I have used porcelain, but I don't I don't currently use it now, no. I used it when I was making some uh, crystalline pots, uh, and, and then I did a few uh, for my uh, wood and gas kiln, other pots with crystal, or with uh, porcelain, but. Uh, yeah, John Britt is, is quite, quite amazing. Uh, he, I learned, I've learned several things from him recently learned quite a bit about uh, deflocculation and flocculation on glazes because I was trying to fix an issue that I had with one of my glazes and his video on that really helped me um, uh, I knew about adding Epsom salt solution to a glaze uh, but his video really helped clarify why and when you would need to do that so uh, I had a glaze that was watery but the specific gravity was I didn't need to just take more water out of it but it seemed really watery so I uh, but it was already at a like a, a 1.65 specific gravity so I didn't I didn't need any more like material in it it just needed to be thicker so uh, adding some Epsom salt solution solved that problem on that specific glaze so Glaze that had a lot of uh, a large percentage of nef uh, nefsi in it, so that that's an issue with one, with that glaze as well as that glaze tends to cake real bad in the bottom after it sits for a while, and the Epsom salt solution also solves that problem. So hopefully I've solved two problems with one thing there.
Yeah, Lucinda. That's that's where I like I said on uh, John Britt's. He's got a whole series on Blaze Chemistry on YouTube. Yeah. I wouldn't want to do all the line blends and all that stuff that he does. So I'm glad he he does it and teaches people how. <laughs> Uh, what uh, method do you use to bisque before you wood fire? Uh, a lot of wood fire potters don't bisque fire before they wood fire, but I do. Um, I still add some pieces to my wood kiln that are greenware, but it's just a lot harder to glaze greenware. Um, but I have an electric kiln and a gas fired kiln, and I can bisque fire in either one of those um, before I wood fire. Uh, what is the typical thickness of the pot wall on your pots? It probably depends on the pot that I'm making. Um, Cause some I will pull thinner or thinner than others or depending on like currently, like on that last one, I didn't pull as much as I could have or even this one because I'm planning on stretching that clay out farther. So I'll leave it a little bit thicker and until I get that clay stretched out because as I as I shape it and stretch the clay out, it's it's actually making the walls thinner even though I'm not pulling it upward because I'm making the overall belly of the piece wider. It makes that whole area there thinner as I'm stretching it. So I don't cut a lot of pieces in half to know the thickness. Uh, but I know if I get too thin, because the pot will tell me for sure. And I usually know if it's too thick, because after it's made, I can pick it up and be like, oh, that's a little heavy on that one. So. Uh, have I ever shipped my pottery overseas? Yes, Philippe, I have. I've shipped uh, several pieces. Farthest I think I've shipped is New Zealand, and then Australia, Taiwan, Singapore. So I've, I've, I've shipped to quite a few places overseas. Uh, how long do you wait before you remove pots from the bat? Uh, I just let them, Patty, I just let the pieces, most of them dry on the bat, and then remove them um instead of like wiring wiring them off i have enough bats that i can do that with which is nice to not have to worry about i don't think i have enough clay uh i can pull this all the way in but i don't know how much of a top it's going to have if i do so i was trying to decide if i was going to leave that wider or, or not Didn't leave myself very much clay in the top of this one to work with. So maybe we'll just close it off, not close it off, but close it really far in and make a Make a little like a really round, something like you'd see put crystalline on. <laughs> All right, let me get my metal rib out here so I can.
curve that and make that really nice and round. Got a little bit of a wobble right there at the top. I'd like to get rid of that. Yeah, that's probably good enough. Uh, yeah, Lucinda, yeah, definitely Darwin and Epsom salt definitely works good in, in on gobs. Um, I haven't seen any new big pot videos. Are you still making those? Yeah, uh, I, I have, uh, I haven't made any large ones lately. The last large one I made, I have to remake cause it cracked in the bis firing. So that's unfortunate. So this summer or this uh, late spring, early summer, I have to make a couple of large pieces for commissions that I have. So I definitely will be working on a couple. Uh, as far as taxing on uh, overseas shipping, uh, uh, Philippe, I believe that all depends on each country of where it's being sent. Uh, if they tax it once you receive it that's all like i said that's all on their end so if you know your country's tax you know code on importing things that would be what you would need to know but i know some countries definitely do have like a vat tax or just a tax on things that get sent into the country so Yeah, I just sold one of Danielle's favorite pieces today. I sold a piece that I've had for three or four years with a plant in it. And uh, this couple that I've sold several pieces to came and they fell in love with it and asked if it was for sale. And so, yeah, I loaded it up with the plant in it <laughs> and they took it home. So. Now I gotta make Danielle another pot like that and put another plant in it, so. I noticed that you do not, do not use a piece of leather to finish your pot rims. Um, yeah, there's lots of things that you can use to finish the rims of a piece. Um, I don't use much of anything. Um, it all depends also like how much grog is in your clay and also how much uh, how much water you use while throwing. Um, some clays and some ways of throwing you just have to you have to be more careful with the, the rim to make sure that you uh, don't expose too much of that grog while doing that. Let's see I need to readjust that a little bit. This one's definitely not going to be as fat as those because I've already pulled much more clay out of it. You can see by the height. 
of what I've pulled. If I have used anything on the rims before, I've used like a, uh, I use like a little piece of plastic sometimes that I can smooth the rim with. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's, like I said, people use all kinds of different things to smooth the rims or to push the grog back down in. get all the water out of the bottom and now I gotta carefully get in there to do that sponge on a stick would have helped me right there but I don't have one Yeah, no man, that's what I've used, uh, a piece of, bag, of plastic from a bag of clay, yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, moon face on a moon jar, yeah, that'd be cool. I, I don't, uh, man in the moon, there you go. I'll leave that up to somebody else to do. Yeah, uh, crafty. It's it's uh, the, one of the biggest challenges is learning to throw larger pieces, um, and there are definitely some techniques that you can learn. Um, but the, I can tell you the thing that I think I've noticed most when I trying to help people throw larger is that most people just need to spend more time throwing in order to learn that. Um, Uh, the pulling down thing that I did, I wasn't really pulling, I was just shaping. I've, I've learned over the years that I think it, it really helps uh, at certain points in the shaping process to kind of like shape from the top down, from, then from the bottom up. And there's not necessarily a time that I always do it, um, but there is uh, just sometimes that it just definitely feels more... Uh, more useful and more practical and actually better for the overall form of the piece to start at the top or near the top and shape down than it does to start at the bottom and shape up. And sometimes I can definitely tell that it helps the, because uh, I'm pushing down rather than up, it kind of helps the stability of the piece. Uh,
Yeah, Lucinda, the price of all clay has gone up quite a bit. I don't use porcelain, but even my, uh, even the clay for my, uh, wood firing, even buying a whole literal ton of clay, uh, I think I still pay 50, uh, 50 some cents a pound. And porcelain is usually more expensive anyway, because the only way to get true porcelain is you've got some of the, not the only way to get true porcelain, but a lot of porcelain uses uh, clays that are imported. So um, a lot of times you'll have clay in there that needs to be imported from another country. So to get, at least if you're in the US, I should say. Um, so to get porcelain, uh, it has, porcelain has gone up considerably. I think when I bought the porcelain that I have, I ended up buying it along with a ton of, of other clay, so I got it at a, a discounted rate, but I still paid uh, over a dollar a pound for the porcelain at that point, and that was a couple years ago. Are oh, you welcome, Casey? Uh, let's see here. I need to get another board down there. That one doesn't fit. It's too small, actually. So. Alright, let's see. Um, maybe we'll do... We've been on 73 minutes. Alright, let's see. Maybe we'll do one larger piece here, at least one. Um, Uh, they want an alarm, yeah, for those used baker trays. Yeah, I got a special deal on these trays or these uh, racks. I uh, I have I don't know four or five of them, and I got them for like a hundred bucks a piece. So <laughs> yeah, I mean I've had them for several years, but uh, yeah, they're they're really nice. Even when I got them, and they came with the boards with them, and I'm like, well, just the plywood is worth a hundred bucks, and then all the metal. And all the work into them, so. Alright, let's see. I've got uh, here two two two-pound clay balls. We'll, uh, we'll center this one and then throw another two pounds on top and we'll do a four-pound clay ball for this one. Normally, I would just center four pounds in one one clay ball, but if you ever want to throw larger and you want to just center smaller amounts at a time, you can do this where you center one clay ball, make it domed at the top, and then throw the second one on top of it, and then push it down into the first one and cone it up to make that. Yeah, uh, Philippe, I, I've, I've got several uh, platter bowls. 
uh, made for this kiln. I haven't decorated them yet, but I, I've got uh, several of the kind of 11, 12 inch size. I've only got a couple of the larger ones, but I do have some made. Is that for me? Okay, you can set it over there. Thank you. You watching me inside? No. Oh, okay. Am I on the TV? No. Oh, just on the phone. Or your iPad. Okay. Yeah, I, I, Philippe, I've made several face jugs for this fire, and uh, I've got, uh, I think, eight made, but I think I've got a couple of them already sold, and then I've got my cabin jugs, and got a couple of those, a few of those already sold, so... thought I felt an air bubble in there somewhere, but I don't see it, so. Uh, I notice you typically pull the base of the clay wide and then neck it in before you make the first pull. Is there a reason you do that or just your style? Uh, Mark, there's, um, I definitely, uh, I don't want to open up the base too wide, but I definitely open it up wider and then pull tor back towards the center. Um, I try to do that based on how wide I'm going to eventually make the bottom of a piece. Although you can push it in, you know, like I did this one, you know, as I'm sh pulling and shaping. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I definitely like to pull up and back towards the center of the wheel just to give me a, a skinnier cylinder because it's always easier to take the clay out than back in. And so I'd rather start with a smaller cylinder than I want, um just depends on what I'm making, obviously. Besides mugs, what's uh, my best seller? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, hmm. I mean, I, I do... Uh, the Peacock Platter Bowls definitely sell really well. Um, uh, let's see. Probably depends on the time of year as well. You know, different things will sell better at different times of year. I definitely don't, uh, I don't track it all as closely as I could and maybe should, but. I was gonna make a jug, but I don't know that I left enough clay up there to do this, so. I don't think I did.
We'll just make another vase like those last two that I just made, just larger. Because I definitely didn't leave enough clay to make a, uh, a jug out of this. Okay, so that was uh, four pounds. It is about almost 11 inches tall, about seven inches wide. Uh, let's see. Uh, did I hear your wheel knocking? Uh, no, it's probably the bat, Lucinda. Sometimes the bat will shake back and forth. Uh, yeah. I did put new belts on my wheel, so it's much quieter than it used to be, but the, the knocking is probably the, the bat. If there's a, uh, sometimes when I start pulling, the bat will shake back and forth if the bat pins aren't really tight on the bat it'll kind of shake back and forth or or rock back and forth and so that can make a knocking sound uh, where do I find my inspiration um, uh, lots of places I mean I as far as shapes and stuff like that I just uh, there's lots of things that I see that I'm uh, other pottery that I'm inspired by and I try to like I said, not try to copy anything exactly, but try to maybe make things my style, but inspired by what I see. Um, inspiration for just working hard in general is... <laughs> uh, because uh, I have a, a wonderful family that I want to support. So there's, there's that. Uh, when was the last time you made a set of soup bowls? Uh, Renee, I, I actually, I'm, I have some different kind of soup bowls that I made this time. I've got some soup bowls that I'm going to give into a local benefit, like a soup, uh, a soup benefit. And then I have some that I made, I got a commission for some soup mugs that are a little bit different shape than I normally, uh, make, uh, that I made, and I kind of like that shape, so I made a few extras, uh, yeah, certain times of the year, soup, soup mugs sell really well. Oh, Sam, uh, Virginia from Indiana, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Philippe, do I ever wire the pot off the bat? Not much. I mean, I can. I just have enough bats that I don't need to. And it helps, number one, helps the pot hold their shape. Uh, if they dry on the bat, they have a really nice flat bottom on them. Uh, there's lots of reasons. Like I said, I don't do much trimming at all, so I don't have really a big need to wire things off uh, as far as that goes. I know my... Uh, I know my buddy Seth's not here, but I, I, was, I think I'm going to make a Rebecca picture. Because I made that one. I showed you guys it was outside at, at the very beginning. And uh, we'll try to make another one here. Maybe he'll show up right as I'm making it to the live stream.
yeah, handles on a Rebecca pitcher, they're, they're not really that hard once you, uh, um, I just did an extruded handle on my last one, and of course that makes it a lot easier because when you extrude a handle, it's not all soaking wet from having to pull it, but if you pull one, you just have to pull it and let it stiffen up a little bit uh, before you uh, put it on. Um, you mainly have to, um, on the Rebecca pitcher, I, uh, I do the spout on one side like this. And then on the on the other the exact opposite side, I do the uh, I do an indention like this, and so this is right where I will attach the handle here. It'll come up and make a, a loop, and then come down around and attach at the bottom somewhere around here. So uh, I definitely you have to like let them stiffen a little bit in open air, but then as it starts drying, I like to lightly cover it with plastic because that handle will dry much faster than the pot, and you don't want it cracking off, and so. I got one more pound and a half clay ball. Uh, maybe we'll make one more Rebecca pitcher, and then we'll call it a call. It, well, I won't call it a night, but I'll. Yeah, a pound and a half for that. Yep, Mary. That knocking right there is probably what uh, Lucinda heard earlier. That's the bat. I've got a little bit of a loose bat on this one. How many wheels have I gone through? I, not not many. I've I've had this one and my stand-up wheel for years, uh, and my I think the first wheel I ever bought I still have it, or maybe that's the second wheel I bought. Uh, I still have it and it still works. If you buy quality wheels, you don't have to buy that many, uh, but. Uh, it's tough to buy a quality wheel when you're just trying it though because they're they're not cheap so which is why i've done the reviews of those couple uh cheaper wheels uh not that i think they're the best wheels in the world but i think if you want to try pottery and you don't have a class to go to you or if you want to just try it at home uh it's better to buy a 150 dollar wheel than to buy a two thousand dollar wheel to, to figure out if you like it or not. Uh, do you wedge your clay? Uh, Crafty, no. I, um, I uh, have a pug mill that I use for my clay. So that does my wedging for me. Uh, you sent us both for a gift on Patreon support. Uh, we shocked her how light it was and quality of the ball. Oh, thanks, Sam. I, I, I really appreciate that. I'm, I'm glad you enjoy the bowl. I'm glad you get to use it. And I appreciate your support on Patreon. I got a, I got to get, uh, I got a couple rewards to send out, uh, again. So I got to get on that. But right now I had to focus on getting ready for the wood firing, so. Uh, it was William, right? Shred packs. <laughs> and that's the, I already forgot. 
I have to go back up here and look. I think it was William. <laughs> uh, if I didn't get that right, you can correct me. But hey, thank you for the donation. Really pre your, appreciate your attentiveness to your viewers. Uh, thank you for sharing. Look forward to more live videos. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Appreciate the donation. Your wheel was built in 1976. I hear you. That's must be a, a well. I guess if it was homemade, it could have been a, a, a really, just a really good, really good homemade one. Do you wedge new clay out of the bag, Debbie? Yeah, actually, any clay I get out of the bag, I pug it. I don't, I don't like I said, I don't wedge it uh, by hand, but I do pug even fresh clay straight out of the bag uh, because. Even if it's fresh clay out of the bag, who knows how long it's been in that bag. And it could be a little bit stiffer on the outside edges of that clay bag than in the center. Uh, I, I've had known several people that used to just take clay right out of the bag and throw it. And then they started wedging or got a pug mill. And they could not believe the difference it made. Um, mainly because you sometimes won't notice that it's uh, like a little bit softer or stiffer on the edge and and it'll just throw off your pot just enough that that it, that affects your throwing but you don't really think about it being because there was a soft and hard spot because you can't really feel it it's not like a really hard spot uh, and then once the clay is like you know really homogenous it just makes a world of difference in how easy it is to throw so I definitely think no matter what clay I would get, I wouldn't just take it out of the bag. I would at least wedge it by hand or pug it before I would throw it. Uh, yeah, Casey, he has the same wheel he started with 40 years ago. Yeah, if you buy it, like I said, if you have a good one, you take care of it. They'll last a long time. So, all right, there's two Rebecca pictures. Uh... Yeah, my, uh, no man, my pug mill does, uh, de-air. It's the larger of the Venco pug mills, uh, or they might make one larger than what I have, but it has, like, the four-inch die, a huge, uh, pug's out a huge die, like, or a, a pug like that. Um, you can't get those in the U.S., I mean, unless you buy one used or, because uh, I don't think they have a, a distributor. They're made in Australia. I don't think they have a distributor in the U.S., but mine was 25 years old when I bought it. So, um, what's the largest amount of pots you've loaded, uh, to, uh, in my wood kiln? Uh, I think almost 800, uh, the, the kiln we fired when John the Potter was here, I think we had like 790, something like that in that firing. Um, so yeah, oh, we're visiting in South Carolina from Maine. Can't wait to see your work. Oh, Mary. Yeah. Well, if you're coming through North Carolina, and you want to stop by, just give me a shout. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the chat session. Uh, Debbie, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, Sarah, uh, a pug mill, I think, to me, if you're going to throw any decent number of pots, it you know the order of importance would be like a wheel, a kiln, and a pug mill. Like, it really is um, super important. No, man, you're welcome. Sam, uh, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate the donation. You guys are awesome. Uh, you guys already support me on Patreon. You didn't have to do that, but thank you. I'm, I'm really, uh, really thankful for everybody uh, that, that does support me, uh, whether it's on Patreon or just watching videos. So anyway, uh, let's see. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, Let's see. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, when we leave the studio. <laughs> yeah, you look dirty when you leave the studio. Yeah, I, I, I can usually throw all day and, and not get very dirty. So anyway, um, appreciate all your support and thank you for being here. And then we'll, I uh, don't know if I'll do another live stream before we start loading the kiln. We start on Wednesday. 
Um, but we'll see. Maybe I will. And then if not, I'll do some live streams during the firing. And uh, yeah, so if you guys have any uh, questions or comments, you can leave them uh, below or just catch me on the next live stream. So anyway, thank you all for your uh, support and for being here and uh, making this fun. So, all right, you guys have a good night and we'll see you soon.